Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So finally I get around to um, doing a quick show and tell, well will it be quick, who knows, um, a show and tell anyway of my picks from the latest Chanel collection Les Rouges. Uh, I've been quite excited about this for a while, um, having seen lots of interesting and largely positive reviews. Um, I have to say when I first saw the promotional material for Les Rouges with um, Kristen Stewart uh, wearing a very bold um, sort of punky's wrong but um, very strong bold red look which you know looked great on her but I couldn't see myself particularly wanting to invest in um, such a bold look but I have to say I think it's a really clever collection because while well, it's got that you know plain Le Rouge theme. A lot of the items are very wearable. A lot of them will mix and match with other things people have in their collections. Um, and it's just nice to have that kind of unifying theme, but be able to um, see pieces that um, you can find a wearable for yourself. They're not all going to appeal um, to the same demographic. I think it's quite interesting, for example, don't worry, I will show you the products I bought in a minute, but um, a lot of the um, positive reviews I've seen have highlighted the blush as the standout item from this collection. Now, I in fact haven't bought the blush, and I'm a huge fan of Chanel um, powder blushes, usually, uh, but when I looked at this one, Whilst it's very, very pretty, uh, it's just much too pigmented for me. And the very helpful sales associate was very keen to show me how, you know, I could very gently apply it to get a wearable look on my paler skin. Indeed, she is very pale herself, uh, which would undoubtedly be true. But, you know, to be honest, I don't want to be having to faff around with that. However, if you were a darker skinned, um, darker complexioned woman I have absolutely no doubt that this blush would be fabulous it's a really pretty shade although it's said to be red rouge profonde I think it's called it's really um, a, a very rosy pink very very rosy pink um, it's described as matte by a lot of people I've seen on YouTube but I, I could see some definite shimmer in it but I accept not as much as is usual for Chanel products so I'm explaining why I haven't got that particular product, but a lot of people are going to like it. Um, and in general, I love Chanel blushes. So I wouldn't want to dissuade anyone from looking at that. On the other hand, I had thought that I probably wouldn't get the quad. Here it is, Candor et Experience. Um, I haven't worn this on the eyes yet. I have played with some of the products last night, but not this one. But when I saw it, um, I decided I would have to have it. Here we go. Um, the reason I've gone for this is that unusually for Chanel uh, eyeshadow quads, these are four mattes. Um, very, very slight satiny finish to them, but they're definitely mattes. And as I say, that's very, very unusual for um, Chanel then normally quite shimmery shades. It's rare to even get one matte in my experience in their quads. Um, so that's unusual in itself. Um, I had thought these shades, I really don't like the new white tipped sponge applicators. I mean, if you're gonna do sponge applicators, which are not great in the first place, at least do them with the black heads. Anyway, that's the side issue. Let's swatch, here's the red. And as you can see, it's more a kind of terracotta than red. That's what Kirsten is wearing. Kristen, I was want to call her Kirsten in the promo. Really pretty um, brown, the darker brown there. Very nice for paler skins, kind of honey. And you can see there, there's a definite sheen, although it's a matte shadow. And a nice mid-toned there. So... Nothing extraordinary in these colours, despite the promotional look. 
pigs, reasonably pigmented, but not, you know, hugely, particularly those two mid ones. So I think that's going to be very workable for someone like me who doesn't like two extreme looks. Um, I will say, I think a lot of people will be able to dupe um, these colours, particularly if you have a lot of matte shades. I don't, to be honest. Um, so I was struggling to find anything remotely similar and I didn't really succeed. I mean, I have Coco Mirage from Tom Ford, which is unusual in having three mats out of four. Um, and I suppose those two are a bit similar, um, but without the kind of bricky colour. Um, but I haven't got a lot of mats. And so when I see a nice matte palette like this, I thought this was too good to pass up, but it is £40, so as I say, uh, I think it's also going to be permanent, so you don't have to rush out to get it. Um, so I can see a lot of people might like to pass on this, certainly for the time being, and concentrate on the other items, which I would certainly advise. Now, also in the eye products are two new Illusion d'Ombre, and I was not initially inclined to go for these either. They are Rouge Brûlé and Rouge Contrast. So um, here is Rouge Brûlé. No, Rouge Cont Contrast, which you can see is a very reddish brown, almost blackened brown. Um, very interesting texture and you can see um, coming off slightly patchy there but slightly creamier than um, the Illusion Doms usually are and absolutely no glitter which is very unusual for the Illusion Dom, it's entirely matte. Um, so although that's quite a bold shade for me, you can definitely kind of blend it out and I just thought it was so different from the other Illusion Dom as I've got. So for example, you know, in tone, um, the Rouge Noir is kind of the nearest that I've got from last year, but much, much more glittery. Um, perhaps not as obvious here, but you know, there's definitely a lot more glitter in it and there's absolutely none in that new one. So I just thought it was uh, an interesting one to have in the collection. If you like um, smoky eyes, you're going to love these either on its own to use as a bait with other shadows. Um, they're very versatile. And then this one I thought when I seen, seen the promotional, I definitely wouldn't get. This is Rouge Brulee. So a very violent orangey red, which may, immediately made me think of last year's Rouge Gorge which I like, although you can see I haven't worn it a lot. It's a lot more orangey um, rouge gorge. Again, I forgot to bring a cleansing wipe to show you. There's rouge gorge. Very, very flattering, actually, with um, blue eyes. Now, this is immediately much creamier texture. And look at that. Um, really, really kind of chromey orange and it's a very strong colour so I was playing around with this a little bit last night it uh, makes for a bold look I'm not sure I put it completely over the eye um, but definitely for a bit of highlighting interest um, that's a great one and it goes brilliantly with one of the um, Stilo Year that I'm going to show you in a moment that I got and also I think it'll be interesting to see how it works out as a base it's um very smooth on the eyes, smoother than the other one and a lot of the uh, Elysian Doms. It felt, although it's definitely, you know, this cushiony formula, a lot nearer to the old style creaminess of um, the Tom Ford creams um, with that kind of glorious multi multifaceting chrome without glitter. So I would say this is an outstanding uh, Illusion Dom from um, Chanel, particularly if you like these dimensional um, cream products, but without the glitter, because Chanel does have a tendency to go for the glitter or shimmer rather than the chroming. And I think also, particularly if, like me, you've been a bit disappointed with some of the recent incarnations of 
the um, Tom Ford cream eyeshadows, which have not been anything like as strong recently as the old releases. I mean, these are not creams, but they're much nearer to the cream formula than they have been in the past. So um, definitely two to check out, I think. Um, two limited edition Stilo Year. And you know how I love these, um, so I nearly always get them. For me, they are the best uh, waterproof eyelining pencils. And they just come in such interesting shades. So here's one of them, Eros. The real ready brown. I just have nothing like that in my collection at all. Um, and it's very much part of this red look. So um, definitely one to check out. And then the other one is called Agape. Greek for love, is it? I'm not sure. Somebody will tell me. I now have a couple of Greek viewers. Agape. May have got that wrong. Uh, anyway, here we are. A much more kind of um, mid-tone brown, really. Now, I was really surprised when I got this home. I thought, oh, well, for sure I've got some mid-tone browns in my huge collection of... Chanel Stilos. Um, when I looked, I really hadn't. Um, I've got a kind of khaki that I've used a lot over the years, and then I've got Arable from last year, but you can see much lighter and a bit more glittery. And then, just as a matter of interest, particularly with that uh, Illusion Dom in Rouge Brule, um, was it this year or last year? Ardent, if you've got it. goes quite nicely I think but I mean nothing like these two so um, you know I always advise if you like um, pencil creamy pencil but waterproof eyeliners to check out the uh, Chanel Stilo Year they're expensive they're 19 pounds but they're the best in my view they're easy to smudge out uh, for a few minutes after you apply them and then they stay where you put them until you um, remove them with waterproof eye makeup remover. Um, fantastic products. Now, there are two nail polishes. I only got one, uh, the Rouge Radical, which I haven't had a chance to wear yet. It's this kind of gloss look, which looks fairly boring in the um, bottle, but I've seen it modelled and it goes on the nails as a much more kind of vibrant jelly um, very pretty for summer, really. I don't know why they're bringing it out in the autumn. Um, so I'm looking forward to trying that. The other, I think, is called Rouge Puissant, and it's a Chanel red cream. You know, it's beautiful, but I have a million of them, and I'm not wild about the new formulas, so um, I have kind of given up collecting <laughs> Chanel nail polishes, or certainly the new ones, so I didn't get that. And then there are, I believe, six... Um, lipsticks, two Rouge Allure and four Rouge um, Matte Velvets, Rouge Allure Velvets. I like the Rouge Allure Velvet formula. I'm not usually a great matte fan. Um, I've talked positively recently about the uh, Charlotte Tilbury mattes, which I do rate, and I think this formula is very similar. Um, there's about two pound difference. I think these are two pound dearer than um, Charlotte Tilbury's. I personally prefer the packaging of these, but I think the formulas are very, very similar. The colour range is somewhat different. I mean, Charlotte Tilbury does have reds and bowls, but goes in a lot more for kind of what I'd call wearable everyday flesh and pinks for different skin tones. Chanel does go in for slightly bolder colours. And that's what's happened in this collection. Um, they are, apart from one uh, brown tone nude in the Rouge Allure, they are um, bold, bold reds. And I was very torn um, between this one, Rouge Chanel. There we go. Mid-toned um, classic red that looks a bit pinky red on me. Um, and the more orangey one, uh, Rouge Fur, and I'm probably going to go back for that Rouge Fur, and I'm definitely going to go back for one of the limited edition lip liners um, in the orangey red, which I nearly got and kind of dithered, and then she was packaging up my goods, but I've thought about it since, so I'm definitely going to go and get it. But um, 
The reds, you know, I've got so many lipsticks. Do I need another? Do you? I think every woman needs at least one Chanel red in her collection. Um, but, you know, whether you invest in these will rather depend on how many lipsticks you've got. Um, I looked what I got similar and I've got Rouge Bouleversant, just a bit um, duller red, can we say? And a real classic, I don't know if they still make this, I'm pretty sure they must do, it's one of the old times, is um, Patient. This is a Rouge Allure, not a Velvet, so it's got a bit of a sheen. Um, and uh, I think is, you know, one of the all-time classic reds. You can see they're all pretty similar in the bullet, although, so look at, there we go, there's Passion, looking a bit more orangey. And here's Bouleversant. <sighs> really, did I need another? No, probably not, but couldn't resist. Um, Rouge for much more orangey, they've got some um, bolder, ones as well um yeah you know who can resist a beautiful chanel uh lipstick so that's the collection um i should say i did wear this last night and it wore pretty well um i was drinking i won't tell you what i was drinking um, but for a couple of hours and uh, it did tend to kind of leave more stain on the outer part of the lip but you know i lose lip color very very easily and quickly and you know, this, this did as well as, as any other formula. So, you know, £24, I think they are. So, again, they're not cheap. Maybe 25 actually. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, very glamorous, worth a look. So, um, I definitely think there's a collection with something for everyone. I, I'm sure I will speak about it again when I have had a chance to use particularly the Elysium D'Ambre and the palette um, and indeed the nail varnish a bit more and tell you how they um, work out um, and there are some really good reviews for this collection already out there on YouTube I might link a few down below of people wearing them uh, the products so um, you can have a bit more of an idea but uh, definitely one worth checking out um, probably I think the strongest of the autumn collections I've seen so far but then you know me I do love me a bit of Chanel anyway until next time bye for now